we are now all set to find what is the transfer function of corresponding to uh, dispersion. Uh, we know the pulse propagation equation del a by del z is uh, in, in this moving frame of reference and I have just rewritten such that these two terms are pushed to the right side. We are, so the goal of this uh, module is to find out what is the transfer function corresponding to what exactly is the form of the mathematical function that describes uh, the transfer function. I want to know an h of omega corresponding to this portion. So you can write this in the frequency domain. We know how to convert from time domain to frequency domain. Your del by del t has to be uh, has uh, del by del t needs to get replaced by j omega. So del by del t square should get replaced by j omega square. Del by del t cube should get by j omega cube. So that's the power of using Fourier transform we have seen uh, uh, earlier. So I can now expand this and write this equation in the frequency domain as del a by del z is, so now everything is in the frequency domain, minus, uh, this is the expansion of j omega square and expansion of minus, uh, sorry, plus j omega cube. So I have this as my uh, pulse propagation equation in the presence of dispersion. So this is how each frequency is evolving as a function of space. This is of the form del a by del z is equal to something times a. This is like a exponential solution. So the solution is very simple. a of z omega is the initial condition a naught omega exponential whatever was this rate at which uh, this a was growing. right? So that rate is here nothing but minus j half beta 2 omega square plus 1 6 beta 3 omega cube plus uh, times uh, z because it is changing as a function of z. So I simply get a nice form for uh, the output uh, uh, frequency distribution given I know what is the input frequency distribution. So it has now come down to a very simple, uh, even though we started out, we uh, went through certain complicated exercises, but it turns out that it is very simple to actually calculate what is the output uh, pulse in the frequency domain and the time domain. Uh, after it undergoes dispersion, uh, dispersion, all what you need to do is a z at omega of omega at the output is equal to input times this, right? So I can represent this half beta two uh, omega square plus one six beta three omega cube as some capital D. Remember, this is not the dispersion parameter. This is just an operator capital D which represents this. Uh, uh, this is not. Uh, dispersion parameter. So uh, all what you could say is that the, there is an additional phase accumulated due to dispersion and that additional phase is e power j dz. The propagation phase is e power minus j beta naught z. The additional phase accumulated to the, the due to dispersion is e power j dz. So uh, you can now write the transfer function if a 0 omega is the input spectrum of your pulse, the output spectrum is just shifted in phase with respect to the input. Okay? So the output spectrum is just e power j dz. So I can now write the transfer function as because you can just write the input as uh, output as input times this one. So h of omega is equal to uh, this, uh, th that represents the transfer function of my system. So in conclusion, the dispersion can be represented as a frequency domain transfer function h of j omega, which has just a phase response. The amplitude response of the transfer function is 1. So that's, that's the key thing. It introduces only phase change in uh, the frequency domain. Now, uh, how do you do dispersion compensation? So if I know what is uh, the h of omega of the system, I can always uh, invert the system if it's a linear system and get back my original signal. So uh, you can have a dispersion compensating filter, which is uh, 1 over h of omega and get back your original signal. So your original signal had a frequency content a 0 omega, it undergoes 
the dispersion in the fiber. So this is the damaged signal or the dispersed signal. You All what you need to do is to take it through a filter whose frequency response is 1 over h of omega. Uh, it's not very complicated because h of omega is known to you. So 1 of h of omega, 1 over h of omega is also known to you. It is just uh, exponential minus. So the question is how do you do this compensation? And there are two approaches we are going to see. One is the optical compensation, the other is the electronic compensation. All optical compensation of dispersion was something that was uh, done traditionally over many years. But uh, off late recently with uh, the advent of coherent communication systems, we have moved to electronic, uh, we, have, we have actually moved to digital uh, dispersion compensation. So we will talk about both. Uh, so legacy systems, the systems that are already established, uh, they are all uh, taking, the, the dispersion is uh, taken care with, uh, usually with dispersion compensating fibers. But when these fiber optic systems are getting upgraded, what they are doing currently is pulling out this optical uh, compensation and they are replacing it with uh, signal, uh, electronic compensation with digital signal processing. So we will consider both. Uh, in all optical compensation what you do is, so this is what happens, the fiber introduces uh, H1 of omega. So you add what is called as a dispersion compensating fiber whose transfer function looks like this, 1 over H of omega, such that you get back your original signal. The question is how do you make a fiber whose dispersion uh, or whose transfer function is 1 over H of H1 of omega. So uh, it has to be designed such that your h1 of omega times h2 of omega is equal to 1. Now how do you do that? Uh, it simply means that we know exact form of h1 of omega. So we know that this is half of, um, now the number of uh, suffixes, uh, subscripts have increased because this 1 indicates fiber 1 and this 2 indicates uh, fiber 2. So this is the transfer function of the first fiber whose length is L1. This is the transfer function of the second fiber which is our dispersion compensating fiber. This is not the transmission fiber, this is my transmission fiber. This is the fiber that I really intend to uh, transmit through. This is the distance of your communication. But what we are saying is that the accumulated dispersion at the end of that uh, fiber, we are trying to compensate by putting another fiber such that its transfer function looks like this. So of course beta 2 is a GVD parameter of the first fiber, beta 2 2 is a GVD parameter of the second fiber, 3 1 is the third order dispersion of the first fiber and 3 2 represents the uh, third order dispersion of the second fiber. Uh, L1 is the length of the first fiber, L2 is the length of the second fiber. So uh, I have just uh, added these two. Uh, and they have pulled out terms common to omega square and omega cube and if this has to be equal to 1, it means that this beta 2 1 L 1 plus beta 2 2 L 2 uh, must be equal to 0, the coefficient of this must be equal to 0, the coefficient of this omega cube must be equal to 0, otherwise you will not be able to get this as 1. So you already now got the condition for a dispersion compensating fiber. I uh, can rewrite this condition here. Uh, it's easier to write this in terms of dispersion parameter because what is known uh, in the data sheets is the dispersion parameter. So I can easily convert this beta 2 into d, we know the conversion relation and we also know the conversion relation between beta 3 to um, uh, the dispersion slope. This is what we had derived in the earlier module. So this is s is equal to the, this is the expression that we had derived earlier. So I can substitute uh, beta 2 as lambda square times d divided by 2 pi c. Similarly, uh, beta 2, 2, so this would be the dispersion parameter. Uh, I could have a dispersion parameter d1 for the first fiber, d2 for the first fiber. This 2 pi c by lambda square is actually uh, same for both these coefficients. So it will, this relation will simply be d1 l1 plus d2 l2 equal to 0. Right? Similarly, you substitute here, you will end up with S1 L1 plus S2 L2 equal to 0. So if I have D versus lambda, which is uh, crossing 0 at uh, 13, 10 nanometer, the, uh, 
condition that I need to uh, satisfy for the dispersion compensating fiber is this one D1 L1 plus D2 L2 equal to 0, S1 L1 plus S2 L2 equal to 0. But typically uh, this S1 is actually the slope of D and uh, for very small bits delta lamb, uh, for delta omega very small uh, which corresponds to a bit stream of pulses greater than 1 picosecond. If the pulse is the, the bit stream has a pulse width greater than 1 picosecond, it means that the spectral width is less than roughly uh, 10 power minus 12, which is like uh, roughly less than 1 uh, terahertz. And so long as your spectral width is less than 1 uh, terahertz, uh, you don't really, this dispersion versus D versus lambda, you can assume it's almost linear per 15, 15 nanometer. And hence, you don't have to really worry about the dispersion, satisfying the dispersion slope, you can satisfy only uh, this equation. But if you're trying to dispersion, do dispersion compensation for much wider uh, spectra, you are trying to do for C band, S band, L band, all put together, or if your pulse width goes smaller than 1 uh, picosecond, then you need to worry about the compensation of third order dispersion also. So how do we uh, now do this uh, design of this uh, dispersion compensation? So the condition we need to satisfy is D1 L1 plus D2 L2 equal to 0. Uh, how do you modify this D2? How do you get a desired D2? So we know that this dispersion in the single mode fiber is contributed by material dispersion and also waveguide dispersion. Material dispersion is a property of silica, you can't change anything about it. So what we can alter or tailor is the waveguide dispersion, right? So you can tailor the waveguide dispersion uh, to achieve any desired dispersion parameter. So essentially, if you are uh, for, for a uh, commercial fiber, D for SMF is 17 picosecond per kilometer nanometer, which means that the DCF must have a negative value, otherwise you cannot get uh, uh, some zero. So what you could do is, you need to design a fiber such that the waveguide dispersion takes it completely negative, so that the sum of these two become zero. Also it is not necessary that L1 equal to L2, you don't need to have very long length of uh, uh, dispersion compensating fiber because the DCF is only there to compensate your dispersion, it is not playing any role in transmission. So what you could do is you could use design a fiber with a very large negative D2 so that D1 L1 plus D2 L2 must be equal to 0. So uh, the another reason uh, uh, is also that uh, you the DCS when you modify the waveguide dispersion what happens is you have to alter the core diameter, you have to change the waveguide parameters. So that may change the loss of the fiber. So you really don't want really long length of DCF. So it changes the modal properties. So the loss of the DCF can be compensated by EDFA. So in your link design, you should now worry about compensating for the loss introduced by the dispersion compensating fiber.